the unparalleled story of St. Benedict's College, the premier institution of the Catholic education in Sri Lanka. St. Benedict's College, which came into existence through the intercession and inspiration of three great saints who committed themselves for the service of the church, namely St. Benedict, St. Sylvester Guzzolini, and St. John Baptist de La Salle, is considered as the cradle of Christian and human education in Sri Lanka. Though the development of this great institution was staged at several stages as the early chronicles and records delineate, the never given up enthusiasm and determination of the pioneers and successors have given this great pasture its illuminating colors and a long stand in the educational field in the locality. With the advent of English monarchy and its legal structure over this tiny island, the Dutch, who were governing the maritime promises of Ceylon and persecuting those who profess Catholicism, were outskirted and many opportunities were provided for the resilience of Catholics. The Act of Freedom in 1806, which was initiated by Sir Alexander Johnston, the first Chief Justice of Ceylon, and enacted with the leadership of His Excellency, the Governor, Thomas Maitland, provided impetus needed to establish educational centers for Catholics as well as other minorities. Soon the deliberations and conviction became a reality and with the generous donation of His Excellency, Robert Wilmot Horton, the first Roman Catholic Seminary of Colombo Vicariate, which will become St. Benedict's College, was instituted in Wolfendel Street under the patronage of Vicar Apostolic of Colombo. When Bishop Hilarion Silani succeeded his predecessor Bishop Monsignor Joseph M. Bravi, the first Silvestro Benedictine Bishop, on the 13th February 1863, the laying of the foundation stone of a new college occurred amidst much fanfare and exuberant celebration. The new school was named after St. Benedict, the father of Western monasticism, and the structure of the college was designed to the shape of an Italian Benedictine monastery. When the college was officially handed over to the brothers in 1868, Brother Modestus Murray became the first and the foremost director of the college and his legacy has been consistently continued for a span of 150 years by the Lhasa brothers. The year 1888 was celebrated by the whole Lasania family, including St. Benedict's, to mark the beatification of St. John Baptist de La Salle, the founder of the Congregation of the Brothers. In the scrutinization of 1889 to 1896, knotty problems as well as witty incidents make the administration more deliberative and productive. Although Mr. H. W. Green, the Director of Public Instruction, suggested the brothers to have Latin and Greek classes for Cambridge senior school level. The Rule 1770 of the Congregation of the Brothers impeded the teaching Latin as a language. Even the church hierarchy, especially the bishops of America, made several attempts to convince the brothers at their general chapters in 1873 and 1897 regarding the issue of Latin problem, no positive outcome was seen. This Latin problem was somehow made clear by the intervention of Pope Pius XI in 1923. But this settlement did not prevent the opening of another school, St. Joseph's at Dali Road under the supervision of oblate missionaries. Under the directorship of Brother Camillus Eugene, an excellent scholar, more educational achievements 
were recorded and the expansion of the boarding department as well as the modification of physics and chemistry labs were done as salient projects of the college. After the Camillus, with the Cyprian as the director of the college took timely decisions to improve the academics and sports in a dutiful manner. But the Balkan, assuming his duties after Brother Cyprian, utilized his capacities to make the college more lively and victorious. The successor of Brother Balkan, Brother Walton James, who is an educational ideologist, made his ideologies into a reality at St. Benedict's by advocating a contextual education system that would fit for the island. During the time period of 1923 to 1931, but the Claude Marie shepherded the college and many achievements such as Lord Folly Shield and the Efficiency Cup were won by the talented Benedictines. In his assumption of duties, Brother Luke Gregory, the next in line of Brother Claude, more difficulties and challenges began to occur due to the creation of Education Ministry as an instrument of the State Council. But Brother Luke, with his Herculean effects, continued to wave the Benedictine flag in high skies. Due to the unquenchable power struggle of the world, the Second World War broke out. Since the World War II dragged the whole country to turmoil, all the city schools were closed and St. Benedict's College was deployed as a security camp for the British Army. As the prominent editor, Maureen Sinivaratna, pens down in her book, A Last in Strong, the victory of the Freedom Party in 1960 and the prospects of the Sirimawa clan smacked a huge blow to the education. The Act No. 5 of 1960 and No. 8 of 1961 were purposely materialized to impede the glory and prestige of Catholic schools but never given up, sweaty tears of brothers, parents and all boys saved our alma mater to instill her religio mores cultura to the children of Mother Lanka, persevering in up to date. During the directorship of Brother Alexander, a man of his inarguable caliber and the gate of wisdom, the college was constantly shining with its fine colors. The leadership and the service rendered by the brothers as administrators were the belief of Jesus, with the Camilla Silva, with the Bertram Pereira, with the Nimal Guru Singh, are highly commendable while the yeoman service of Brother Grammy Pereira towards the development of the college, specifically the infrastructure, is undoubtedly explicit and will be remembered down the line of Benedictine story. The sesquicentennial jubilee of the college was celebrated with amazing and memorable celebrations under the guidance of Brother Janaka Fonseca, the director of the college from 2012 to 2016. After Brother Janaka Fonseca, with the Henry Dizanaika, the former provincial visitor, became the director of the college, and after three years of his valuable service, with the A.E. Tarsisius, the present director of St. Benedict's, took the reins of the college and continuously striving to hold St. Benedict's green and white flag up in the sky following his committed virtuosos. The story of St. Benedict's is also the heroic story of the De La Salle brothers and it is yet to be sung in the coming years. The brothers are proud of their mission for the span of 150 years, which first started at St. Benedict's in this wonderful island.
it is also high time for the brothers to mesmerize with gratitude our dearest founder St. John Baptist de la Salle as he commemorate his tercentennial heavenly birth. Therefore, in such atmosphere of appreciating and celebrating this twofold jubilation as a milestone in the last Aryan history, let us wish at multos annos to our alma mater so that she may flourish and be an illuminator day by day under the wing of Lasallian patronage and through the intercessions of our dear founder Saint John Baptist de la Salle. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. <laughs>